Good morning, everyone. Uh, and this is your first fireside chat for Friday at the Zero Project Conference 2022. Um, today, this morning, we're joined with uh, Yosuke san and Barak Shane from um, the Nippon Foundation as well as from the Embassy of Israel in Japan. Uh, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. And how Thank are we doing you today? Thank you How, how Hello, are we nice doing to today? I'm great. Thank you. Brilliant. How are you? I'm good. I'm good as well. Thank you guys so much for, for making the time today to, to join us and tell us a little bit more about the I'm Possible Hackathon. Um, we had the opportunity to hear from uh, Takumu hatori san uh, during the Hacking the Hackathon session. And so today we're here to learn a little bit more about how the, the initiative came about, who are the key partners in the initiative, as well as maybe some challenges that you guys faced in the setting up of this accessible hackathon. Um, so first, before we kick, it, kick off everything, I would love to know a little bit more about who the partners were and how this idea came about of the I Am Possible um, hackathon. So either to Yosuke-san or Barak, over to you. Yeah, so um, the idea across the started in our embassy, uh, basically we are all, always trying to look for opportunities to connect between uh, Israelis and Japanese through common grounds. And the issue of accessibility is a common ground that uh, we found, found very important for in, in both countries and that each country can contribute to each other in different ways. And um, we brainstorm in our, in our embassy what can be done, hackathons, it's a very common practice nowadays in Israel in many different fields. And um, yeah, we approached Nippon Foundation, which is a very good and uh, big partner of, of us in uh, other projects as well. And uh, their contribution to the issue of accessibility in Japan uh, is very big, uh, so they were really, uh, really good partners in this regard uh, on this topic. Uh, Ishikawa-san, maybe you can uh, give your your view on that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we have different projects with the embassy in Japan, uh, but um, I just had a conversation with the embassy about the idea of a hackathon or something else, and. I, after saying that, I noticed that Israel is very, uh, have a lot of um, experience in hackathons and startups and everything. And we kind of came to notice that we are the best partners to do this. So that's kind of how it happened. That's I'll just, uh, I'll just add on another point that in mm -hmm. Israel in general, the issue of, uh, the whole issue of uh, accessibility technologies is a very, very, um, I'll, call, I'll say, hot, hot topic nowadays. There are many startups in in this field, and um, so this is, yeah, this is how how it came together. Brilliant! Thank you both so much for for explaining this to us. Um, and could I just ask a little bit more? What was the aim of the hackathon? What was it hoping to achieve? What was the wider wider goal of this um, impossible hackathon? Um. Shikawa-san, do you want to answer first? Sure. Um, thank you. Yeah, so the hackathon itself, we wanted to uh, create a community more than just a single event where people with and with no disabilities can kind of come together to find solutions for persons with disabilities mm -hmm. so that everybody can be included in, in the society, basically. Yes, yeah, so, so in different than um, other hackathons, uh, which uh, each hackathon has uh, different goals, and in this goal, it's, it was really about the ideas, um, and we really approach also people that maybe don't have experience in startups or experience in technologies, but just have brilliant ideas. Mm -hmm. And we really encouraged uh, also young people and uh, and. To, to approach and give us their ideas in this in this field. And um, really the idea was more than just a hackathon. Mm -hmm. It was to bring together people from Japan and Israel that are really different. And we will maybe touch upon it in a, in a second more because it was also the challenges um, that are really different in an issue that is very, um, can be something very sensitive to some people and the cultural differences in this are, are very big. 
And um, you know, at the end of the day, when you put together people from different cultures on this kind of topics, it really connects, mm -hmm. connects people. And I think that what, this was the big, big uh, idea of it. Of course, that to find uh, good solutions was the you know direct goal in this, but the, we really aimed for the bigger picture here as well. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. I'm, I'm so glad you brought up the issue of uh, cultural differences. That's something else I want to touch on as well. Um, so what was the kind of uh, challenges that both of, uh, both of you faced in setting up this hackathon? Would you be able to give us some examples, uh, maybe uh, an anecdotal story perhaps uh, for our audience at home? Um, sure. Uh, may I start? Of course. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, we had a lot of... Um, um things <laughs> um so i would just uh, point out one for the time being so we basically uh this was basically an international uh hackathon and but because it's the Yippon foundation and the embassy of israel uh we had a lot of japanese and israeli um in in the community and we tried to build the teams uh, so that, you know, it's always better to build teams in a hackathon. I, I don't know, maybe not always, but <laughs> anyway. Um, and it, it was really difficult to um, initiate the team going, um, um, especially it's because it's online. Uh, it's not like we're in a huge hall with, like, team in each table, stuff like that. It, we had to do, like, kind of ice breaking online. And some people have some uh, difficulties uh, speaking in Japanese or English, or uh, maybe some people, uh, of course, we have some deaf um, participants. That kind of uh, accessibility plus cultural team building um, uh, uh, barriers made team building a little bit difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I can elaborate on that. so. I think that the cultural difference is really pre plays a big role in, in in things that maybe when you do it uh, not internationally or with uh, cultures that are more similar to, to each other, you sometimes don't think about it even, but I will say example even how you present, how, how you make a presentation, how you present your idea. It's completely different how you do it in Israel and how you do it in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, in Israel, we really try to, you know, do it as short as possible, summarize everything, give straight to the point exactly what you want to, to deliver in a very summarized way. While Japanese people, usually they like to elaborate and give all the details and also even the presentation, how they build. It's totally different. But I think that this is what is beautiful because there is no right or wrong in this. And I think that each side uh, learn from each other on this process a lot. Uh, not only the teams itself, I think, because there were involved mentors and judges that came from different places. And each has its own perspective on the topic of accessibility, his own perspective in general of how Hackathon is, uh, should, should be done. And I think it came out beautifully um, together with the different approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to have a lot of patience, definitely. A lot, a lot of patience and a lot of openness uh, uh, towards other side. You need to bring on board people that have patience and people that are willing to uh, accept that things are being done differently than, than the way that they are used to do, uh, that, that they used to uh, do usually. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you both so much for, for that very insightful um, sharing of your experiences. Um, having come from Asia myself, I do understand the need to elaborate and, and describe everything when, when doing a presentation, so I absolutely understand what you mean. Um, and one of the key things about the I'm Possible Hackathon is the fact that it was um, incredibly accessible. Would you be able to share a little bit more about the accessibility features that were shared throughout the entire the hackathon? Uh, hackathon as well as some of the adaptations that you had to make um, in the process of, of running this hackathon? Uh, sure. So um, we had, th this was like, a, this was a few month event. 
Um, so we have this online community plus a YouTube channel so that um, a lot of people can get some input um, before uh, working into the, working onto the idea. So uh, we have some events and communities and YouTube. Well, and you and all for during all of it, uh, we tried to make it as accessible as possible, obviously. Um, and so we basically had in our events, for example, uh, we would have uh, Japanese and English mixed um, audience and mixed uh, panelists. So we had Japanese English translation as well as speech to text, um, as well as sign language. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of um, that linguistic uh, accessibility. And in terms of the online community, uh, it was sometimes a little bit difficult for the uh, person with visual uh, disabilities to access the online community. So we really tried to um, be as flexible as possible. So we didn't, we tried not to limit it to the platform that we were offering. We wanted uh, everybody to use their own um, platform if they want to. For example, some team was not uh, comfortable with using our platform, so they just used uh, a Slack, for example, mm -hmm. for something that they're used to use. Yeah. Um, did I miss something? Do, do you want to add something? Um, I think it's important, first of all, important to, to mention that the, the sign language was in both, there were two kinds of sign language in Hebrew and in Japanese. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I think that, yeah, the technical issues were a thing. And I think it was also solved by, we had like di uh, different kinds of mentors that helped in the, pro in the, in the whole process. Mm -hmm. the, like there was the mentors that were overseeing kind of the administration or technical issues. There were the professional mentors that are helping the teams um the, you know with with the content and the actual uh, content of the hackathon mm -hmm. and there were uh, the translators and uh, that helped f f the teams with the language barriers so Thank you. Thank you both so much. Um, I see that we are running tight for time. So before we before we go off this call, I would love to hear a little bit more about when the next I'm Possible Hackathon will, will be taking place and how um, for our audience at home, how they can sign up if they, are, uh, if they would like to be a part of this. And is there any special requirements or any special theme that the hackathon will be um, circulating against? <laughs> so, so uh, we are currently we are currently overseeing like also our plans for this year, and we definitely are planning to uh, continue this this event. As as we mentioned, it's not only one event, and it's rather on building a community. Uh, the same as we uh, we were cooperating cooperating with Zero Project before. Of course, we will let you know mm -hmm. once we have the full details on on that. And uh, it will be posted in our websites, both of Fing uh, F Nippon Foundation and Israeli Embassy. And with your help, uh, we will make the second hackathon even greater. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Barry. Um, and that's all we have time for today. Uh, thank you so much to Yosuke-san and Mr. Barak from uh, the Nippon Foundation and the Israeli, em uh, sorry, the Embassy of Israel in Japan. Uh, thank you both so much for taking the time today, and we hope you're following the Zero Project conference online. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.